some glorious day Jesus came and made me whole. He so complete, and satisfy my soul. Now as I face life's that troubled
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our gathering together today. We thank you because you have spoken to us on practical issues. You have helped us to see how the work of the Lord should be done. You have shown us the qualities to demand from our lives. We pray, O oh Lord, that your grace will be abundant in our lives so that all that you want us to do will be done to your satisfaction in Jesus' name. You have satisfied us with your grace, with your love, with your word, with everything that you have given unto us. All we ask now is, are you really satisfied with us? Lord, we pray that you'll grant us the grace so that all we do will be pleasing unto you and you'll be satisfied with us in Jesus' name. Speak to our hearts now in this message. In Jesus' name, we pray. We're coming to the conclusion of our leadership seminar today. We thank the Lord for what he has taught and revealed since we came in the morning. And now we come to this concluding message, which is the X-ray of our Christian service. X-ray of our Christian service. The medical field makes us very familiar with the X-ray. When somebody says he wants to have an X-ray, it may mean one or two or three different things. Or it may mean that he wants to have the X-ray for one, two, or three reasons. Number one, there may be a presence of foreign objects that the medical people want to identify. They want to locate. They know that object should not be there. And it is causing some inconvenience in the body. And so they want to have an x-ray. So they'll be able to identify and locate where that object is. And then they'll see the process of removing that object. Two. It may be there is a kind of malfunctioning of various parts of the body. And they do not really know the reason why. And the x-ray will be able to show what is in a particular place. Is there a hole in the heart? Is there a problem in the bone? Is there something that is missing somewhere that is not passing the right fluid to the particular direction they want to be able to tell? Other times, you just want to have the x-ray to certify the health of that individual. Is he healthy? Is he sound? Is everything normal? The x-ray might be able to tell you whether things are normal or not normal. X-ray reveals what each individual may not be able to see, may not be able to know with medical investigation or checkup. That is the ordinary checkup, the ordinary investigation. You are not able to know, therefore you need an x-ray to be done. Through that x-ray, you may be able to discover the hidden internal parts, and you may be able to observe them clearly, which will not be known or possible ordinarily. It is this kind of concept we are applying to the Christian service, that in our service, sometimes there is a strange kind of appearance. A strange kind of activity, a strange kind of doctrine or kind of object. And it is the x-ray from the Lord that actually makes us to know whether uh, those uh, objects are, uh, they ought to be there, they ought not to be there. Or whether they are exaggerated beyond measure. At other times we just see that we are not bearing fruit in our ministry. And therefore we need the x-ray of the Spirit of God. To direct us and to lead us to a pinpointing the real problem in that ministry. You see many things are involved in Christian ministry or Christian service. All we do will eventually be scrutinized, examined and evaluated by the Lord. And we just want the Lord to help us right now so that he will scrutinize it now. Evaluate it right now. 
and he will examine it now to see actually whether they are pleasing unto him or not. Because you see, at the last day, it will be very difficult to correct anything. All possibilities of correction would have gone. The day of grace would have been over. So we want that x-ray now so that uh, all the correction we still need to make, we can make. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. We know that God has the ability and the capacity to perform that x-ray. And to tell us if something is wrong. Tell us what is wrong. If there is any strange activity. Or strange spirit. Or strange kind of doctrine. The Lord can tell us right now. So that we can get those things corrected. And then our ministry will be pleasing in his sight. You can read on your own later Psalm 139. Verses 7, 7 to 12. That passage is still telling us that. God knows all things. Would you take a flight and go into the heavens? The Lord is there. Would you go into the depths of the sea? The Lord is there. Why is it possible for you to make your bed even in the depths of hell, of shield, of the grave? The Lord is there. In fact, darkness cannot hide anything from him. And with that understanding, we know that he knows all things about us. He knows all things about our Christian ministry. He knows what needs to be corrected. God has given a pattern for Christian service that cannot be altered. He always keeps his eyes upon our Christian ministry of service so as to be able to correct or straighten out whatever uh, we need. We need to keep on divine track. If we take correction from time to time, our service will bear fruit. If when God points out this is not right or that is not right, after he has extrayed everything concerning our service and ministry, if we take correction from time to time, then the ministry or the service or the Christian activity will be a fruit. And that will be rewarded in eternity. If, on the other hand, we do not measure up, we may eventually lose our rewards, if we're not careful, we may even eventually lose our very soul. That's the reason we need to depend upon the Lord. So that the Lord will check us up. The Lord will scrutinize and investigate. And from time to time, we'll open up a Christian ministry unto the Lord. So that all we do will be pleasing in His sight. If our time will permit, I want to touch on three points. Number one, divine pattern for Christian service. Divine pattern for Christian service. Number two, divine evaluation of Christian service. Divine evaluation of Christian service. Number three, rewards according to enduring work. Reward according to enduring work. Let's look at number one. Divine pattern for Christian service. In Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 5. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 5. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was admonished of God. When he was about to make the tabernacle, for see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed thee in the mount. Here you will see God directing Moses. He will not leave Moses to decide and to dictate any part of the building or the erecting of the tabernacle. God gave all the details. And then after God had given all the details to Moses, he said, Moses, <clears throat> see that you make all things, not some of the things, not the majority of the things, literally all things, according to the pattern showed thee 
in the mount. If you have studied that tabernacle very well, there were things that appeared small in the tabernacle. There were things that appeared big in the tabernacle. There were things that only the Levites will see within the tabernacle. There were things that only the high priest will see in that tabernacle. There were things that everybody, the children of Israel, looking from without, as they look at the badger's skin, as they look at the outer court, as they look at the brazen uh, altar, there were things that almost everyone in Israel will see. And yet there were things that the high priest will see only once a year. As the high priest will go into the Holy of Holies, and then he will see within the veil. And then God said, the ones that are seen regularly every day, the ones that are seen by everybody every time, the ones that are seen by only the ministering officials, the Levites, and the ones that are seen by only the high priest once a year. All things must be done according to the pattern showed unto you on the mount. Which tells us, you see, as you look at our Christian ministry, there are some areas of our Christian ministry that even the unbelievers outside can see the effect. There are some areas of our Christian ministry that only the workers know much about those areas. There are some areas of our ministry that only the great high priest, the king of kings and the lord of laws, the one that is the high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. There are some parts of our Christian ministry that only that high priest can see. And the Lord is giving us a challenge that whether it is what everybody can see, only what the workers can see, only what the pastor is sharp enough, knowledgeable enough to be able to detect and to be able to correct, or what even the pastor may not be able to correct, only what the great high priest, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our King, the one that is made a priest forever, even when it is only what he can see. Would you see then, see to it like moses that you make everything all things according to the pattern that has been showed thee where was it shown the picture was not shown in the valley you see there are some pictures that you never can see in the valley the picture was not shown to him in the plain there are things you cannot see while you are still with the multitude you see as you see the children of israel all the millions of them going on in the plain and taking their journey there were some things that moses could not see only when he went to the mountain top that god showed him on the mountain top and then god said carry that picture in your mind you've seen it on the mountain it's been revealed unto you make sure that you do all things to make all things according to the pattern you are shown when you are on the mountain top on a mountain top without food on a mountain top without water on a mountain top without human support on a mountain top without the material things that support our flesh and our lives on the mountain top, without any human aid, any human partner, on the mountain top with the Lord alone. I'm sure you know the story that Moses went to the mountain top and 40 days and 40 nights he was with the Lord Almighty. If you think of a day for a year, 40 years in the wilderness, 40 days on the mountain. If you think of uh, the, the cycle of their journey, the complete journey was taken in 40 years. And then you understand they spent 40 days there. If you think of the three uh, main figures in the whole Bible, Jesus, Moses, and Elijah, because you now remember the Mount of Transfiguration. And you remember that that number 40 is common to all of them. Jesus Christ fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And Elijah fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And Moses fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And are they not all associated with the mountain? Jesus Christ on the mount gave the sermon on the mount. And Elijah on the mount, he saw the, uh, the, the, saw the rain that will come. Because we're so long on common camel. The fire eventually fell on the sacrifice. And then we're told about Moses on the mountain. 
Or were there not revelations that were given on the mountain Sinai, on the mountain Moriah, on the mountain uh, with uh, Elijah, on the mountain with the Lord Jesus Christ, as to reveal the very meaning of the sermon on the mount of the law and of the whole, the whole concert economy of God unto us from the mountain. And now God is saying, now for Moses, see very clearly. And see to it, you do not deviate and you do not erase anything. You do not alter anything. Make it according to the pattern. Show to you in the mountain. And then Jesus Christ from the mount has given us a sermon that we cannot alter. A sermon that relates to our lives. A sermon that relates to our relationship with God. A sermon that relates with our relationship with the people of the world. A sermon that relates with the church ethics. A sermon that relates with everything we do for the kingdom of God. Because you see the very center of that sermon, there's no time to think about it and to look into it now, is concerning the kingdom. The beginning of that sermon is, if you will do what he wants you to do, and you are poor in spirit, yours is the kingdom of heaven. And as you go on through chapter 5, the emphasis is on the kingdom. When you come to chapter 6, you know the prayer contains thy kingdom come. And the end of that chapter is telling us about the kingdom. Seek for the kingdom of God. When you come to chapter 7, it's telling you about the kingdom as well. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall get into the kingdom. So everything concerns the kingdom revealed on the mountain and it tells you everything about your life everything about the spiritual everything about your relationship with the lord then it tells the church see to it that you do not deviate from what has been shown to you on the mountain and so we want to sh sh see to it that we have the divine pattern for christian service if you turn to first chronicles chapter um, chapter 28 First Chronicles chapter 28, and uh, we're looking at it from verse 9. And thou, Solomon, my son, know the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts, for the Lord searcheth all hearts, hearts before now, hearts at this present time hearts until it will come for the lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts if thou seek him he will be found of thee but if thou forsake him he will cast thee off forever take it now for the lord has chosen thee to build an house for the sanctuary be strong and do it verse 11 then david gave to solomon his son the pattern let's stop there for a moment now you remember solomon was a wise son uh, if you read the accounts very well the bible says he had been wise even before david died because you'll see somebody came to david and said i praise the lord for you because he has not denied you to have a son a wise son to sit on your throne after you have gone and even with all that wisdom after david died and god appeared unto solomon god said what do you want and do you know what he wanted he wanted more wisdom and understanding and god gave him understanding and wisdom and if you read in uh, in the kings and you read in the chronicles what do you find you find that kings who are coming from all other nations because they had heard about the wisdom of solomon that man was wise and we're told he was so wise he had so many proverbs uh, we have some of them in the book of proverbs but we're told that he wrote about three thousand proverbs he spoke about trees he spoke about the sun about the moon about the stars about the fish about almost any creature you can think about that man was wise but he wasn't allowed to use his wisdom in building the tabernacle the temple that the lord wanted to be built then david gave to solomon his son the pattern you see if we're wise wonderful we're educated, wonderful. We're graduates, wonderful. You've been to university, great. And you have also been involved in various other things, marvelous. But do you know, when it comes to the work of the Lord, the service of the kingdom, we want to see to it that it is not by intelligence, it is not by native wisdom, it's not by acquired wisdom, it's not by experience. David delivered, he gave to Solomon his son the pattern. 
and you want to make sure that you have the pattern from the Lord. You have the pattern from the Word of God. You have the pattern as to how Christian work should be done. Divine pattern for Christian service. You may read the other verses up to verse 12 on your own. Then let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And we're looking at it from verse 10 and 11. According to the grace of God which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take it, how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. We have to be careful that we look at the pattern in scripture. And we build according to pattern. Discover the divine pattern. See what the Lord wants us to do. See how the Lord wants us to do it. Let us understand that if we're going to build at all, we have to build according to God's specifications. You see, when you talk about the temple, that temple was not the all-important thing as you think about it. The temple, did, that temple or that tabernacle doesn't exist now. The one they built in the wilderness is no more to be found now. And even though it was a temporary thing for a particular age and for the period of the law, Yet, God told Moses, you must make sure you build it according to pattern. If you think about the temple of Solomon, the one he built, also you will know that that one is already taken out of the way because of the sins of the children of Israel. And yet, you know, God gave the pattern. Now, the most important temple now, that is the church. We are the temple of God. We are the building of God. Now you know this other one you see here, the building you see here, will not be raptured. It's the church, the temple, the living temple that will be raptured. All your buildings in your districts, that will not be raptured. It's the people inside those buildings, the believers, the children of God, that are going to be raptured. That teaches us a particular lesson. You know, the, I see a lot of uh, mistakes today in the Orthodox churches. The Orthodox churches will spend more money on their church cathedral than they spend on the people attending the cathedral worship. They don't understand. That cathedral is going to be here after Jesus has come. But it is the people of God who are born again that will be raptured after the church is gone. Uh, during our question time, we, we had quite a number of questions on our district church, our district building, our district days, and, you know, to make it like this and make it like that. If there is money, okay. If there is no money, forget it. And spend all your time. And spend all your effort. And spend all that you have on the people that are going to be raptured. Now, if God was so serious about the tabernacle, that already now is uh, folded up. If God was so serious about the temple, that now no stone has been able to stand upon another, how much more is he serious now about the real temple, the people of God, the children of God, the building not made with hands, the tabernacle that actually God is going to make his habitation in with the people of God. We need to build according to pattern. Builders build according to the architect's design. Manufacturers manufacture according to the standard models. And teachers in our schools teach according to the syllables. And then we're told we have to follow the same way. And we as Christian ministers, that we must minister, we must serve, we must preach, we must organize everything that we do in the church of the living God according to the revealed pattern in the word of God. Now to build according to pattern, what are the things we need to note? Number one, know that pattern. Appreciate that pattern. Love that pattern. You see, if we're going to build according to pattern, we have to know that pattern. You see it from the Bible, Christian ministry. You look at the life of Jesus Christ, and you'll see Christian ministry. Look at Paul the Apostle, you'll see Christian ministry. Look at the early church, you'll see Christian ministry. And you'll see how Christian ministry was carried out. You'll see the pattern in which it ought to be done. You'll see the foundation being laid. 
and you will see that you are supposed to dig very deep and then build on the foundation because he that hears these words of mine and does not do it, does not obey. It's like a man that builds his house upon the sound, not having foundation. And then the rain will come, the storm will come, and will beat upon the arms of the wind, and then the collapse will be great irreparable. Therefore, know that pattern. Appreciate that pattern. Love that pattern. Only then will you be able to build according to pattern number two. Study and constantly re-examine the pattern. Study and constantly re-examine the pattern. Not to find fault. Not to find loopholes. Not to criticize. But to commit yourself to that pattern. You see, if you are going to build according to the pattern, the pattern must be your regular study. The pattern must be your regular, your regular thing. You must be very intimate with you, looking at it all the time, looking at it all the time to find out, is there anything um, deviating from the pattern? Am I omitting some little, little details in the pattern? Am I omitting some things that are seen by only the high priest once a year from the pattern? Am I going my own way? Make sure that regularly, day by day, constantly, you are re-examining the pattern. You are studying the pattern. Never criticize the pattern. Because even Solomon in his wisdom, Solomon in his wisdom, was not allowed to criticize the pattern David had given to him and then to be like he wanted. Number three change your life change your lifestyle change your outlook change your ministry methods to fit the fixed unalterable unchangeable pattern uh, you see the pattern is fixed unalterable unchangeable already the pattern is in the word of god and even for the modern man it is that pattern that the lord has given unto us so if anything has to change, it is your life that has to change to fit the pattern. Your lifestyle, your outlook, your method, anything that you are doing which is contrary to the pattern has to be changed. Because you see, the pattern is always right. You may not understand it because Jesus Christ said, what I do now you don't understand. But afterward, you will understand. Do not wait until you understand. Once you see there is a difference between your preaching style, between your ministry method, between your lifestyle, between your mode and between the things you are doing and the word of God and the pattern the Lord has given us, that you know that you ought to change immediately because the pattern is fixed. The pattern is unalterable, unchangeable. So what if uh, we stick to that pattern? And many people do not get converted. Doesn't that show we have to change the pattern so that many people will come in? No, not at all. 120 years, no preached. Only eight people himself plus seven others. Although the people did not all rush in, all the same, the pattern remained the same. And here was Jesus Christ, and he preached in John chapter 6. And when he gave the word unto them, except to drink the blood of the Son of Man and eat the flesh of the Son of Man, ye have no life in you. And eventually he explained, he said, the flesh profited nothing. The word I speak unto you, their life and their spirit, were told that from that time many of his disciples walked no more with him. Oh Lord, if many of your disciples have gone away after listening to that pattern, doesn't that mean that the pattern has to change? No, not at all. The pattern remains fixed, unchangeable, unutterable. In fact, Jesus faced the twelve and said, Will ye also go away? No, the pattern will not change. If anything will change, I will have to change. If anything will change, you will have to change. If anything will change, your wife has to change her dressing. If anything has to change, the rich men that are coming, they have to change. If anything will change, the literates in our Yoruba churches, they have to change. The pattern remains the same. The word of God remains the same. If anything will change, it is we human beings that will change. How can we tell the Almighty to change for us? How can we tell the creator of the heavens and the earth, the personification of wisdom, the one that has been from eternity to all eternity? How can we of yesterday, of yesteryears, talk to the Almighty and say, this one, we don't want it changed for us. No, the creature will change for the creator. 
the creator cannot change because the creatures are finding some things inconvenient therefore what we need to understand is that our lifestyle will change our lives will change everything we're doing which is not according to the word of god will change because this word of god remains forever and i thank god for you people because i know that you are those categories of people that you do not want the word of god to change isn't that what we did when we came into the kingdom of god we repented of our sins we didn't tell god not to call our smoking sin not to call our gambling sin not to call our polygamy sin not to call all the gambling the evil things we have been doing to be seen oh yes we realize that god will not change the standard of salvation we change and we repented that's how we became saved and then after we after we came into the kingdom of god we began to see the inbred nature of sin and the adamic nature we didn't so god change that standard is too high be ye perfect as your father which is in heaven is perfect that's too high change it for me be ye holy for i that call you i am holy change it for me that he might purify peculiar people unto himself change that for me that may you remove all anger all clamor and all kind of bitterness and all malice take it away from the midst of you we didn't say god that is too high change it for me we came to god we said a second level of change is necessary and so we came again that second level of change happened we became sanctified and then when god said now before you are going to go out to preach the gospel education is not enough experience is not enough ability is not enough natural talent is not enough eloquence is not enough you must be baptized in the holy ghost we didn't say oh god that standard is too high change it for us how can you expect a human being to pray and pray and pray to the point he will speak in a language he has never never learned that language is uh, that kind of standard is too high change it for us oh no the standard is there and you know two thousand years now have gone almost gone and passed and we're still we are the people to change and we are the people to consecrate we are the people to just plow ourselves under until all of self is totally taken away if there is anything that will change we will have to change our families will have to change our children will have to change and all those people in our districts they will have to change the word of god will not change or will it change no it will not change because god says i am god i change not what are we to do with the pattern number one i said love it know it appreciate it number two what you do with the pattern study it and constantly re-examine the pattern number three change your life change your lifestyle change your outlook and change your ministry methods number four defend the pattern you see this pattern that has been given unto us another architect may come around and tell us that the temple that solomon built was not actually proper the dimensions are not all right and uh, what they used in the doors were not all right the kind of wood they use is not going to last and all the furniture in the in the temple of solomon is not going to last and you know all these nations are coming and the queen of sheba will come and all these various kings will come anybody might try to tell solomon this wood is not all right the one that you have covered with silver is not all right the one you are trying to cover with gold is not all right and solomon will say i can't change it daddy gave it to me so uh, david gave it to me and because of that it was got it was gotten from the lord we cannot change it what are we going to do we're going to defend it defend it defend it you know there are some people that will come and they will try to say uh, this restitution concerning women isn't this very delicate and very sensitive and very touching doesn't it expose people you know all these uh, women they do restitution and when they do restitution they're going to you know leave a man who will care for them who will care for the children defend the pattern other people are going to come and say you know if you really want people to come all these uh, things were written in the word of god why can't we overlook first timothy chapter 2 verse 9 about jewelry about the air about all the dress and everything if we will just keep quiet on that area more people will will come we interview them we know their problem we know why they are not coming they say they don't want this they say they don't want that defend the pattern other people will say holiness holiness all the time look at poverty look at joblessness look at barrenness look at all the things that are taking place in our land if we're you know if we don't take time 
look at the way the people are suffering you know when somebody dies you know we're asking the questions now and trying to answer the questions somebody dies no money to be able to take that person uh, to his village and the people are getting discouraged and this and that why don't we give the time give up the time and all this holiness 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 and try to keep the standard and the pattern don't we know that now people are suffering and what the people actually need now in this difficult time they need understanding and they need care and they need love and they need provision and they need our strength and it needs and that if we're able to give that okay but if we're not able defend defend the pattern defend the pattern other people will say i've been coming to this your church and uh, you know what i don't agree with i don't agree with this i don't agree with this i don't agree with this now what are you going to do are you going to support the sinner and oppose the lord jesus christ are you going to bend the knee to the rich man that has just come to the politician that is trying to come to the women that are trying to come and you are going to turn your back on the lord jesus christ defend the cross defend christ defend the doctrine of the bible defend the pattern that has been given unto us whatever is happening whatever winds may be blowing and whatever storm may be around you there's one thing to do with the pattern you look at it you love it you appreciate it you know it you study it you re-examine it from time to time not only that to you change your life you change your lifestyle you change your own kind of outlook and you change your ministry methods and then you defend the pattern and the doctrine and the methods and the standard that the lord has given unto us number five you periodically assess your own christian service in line with the pattern periodically you will assess your own christian service with a pattern periodically you will just sit down and say how do i measure up in preaching salvation how do i measure up in preaching that people should live above sin how do i measure up in telling the people they need to live a life above reproach how do i measure up in all the pattern that we have been given from the word of god when last did i talk on sanctification when last did i talk on being baptized in the holy ghost when last did i emphasize one man one woman when last did i emphasize you must repent believe on the lord jesus christ and have an evidence before you are baptized in water when last did i encourage the people food or no food property or no property go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature when last did i talk about the imminence of the return of the lord jesus christ regularly periodically you will re-examine or you will assess your christian service in line with the pattern number six you carefully observe the little parts of the pattern as you observe the big major parts you see there are people that will say this one doesn't matter that one doesn't matter i do remember the case of Uza in the old testament in second samuel chapter six there's no time to read all those references now you see they wanted to bring the ark back onto the city of david and while they were coming back bringing that ark the oxen shook a little and then he just touched that ark like this he fell down dead isn't that just a small thing remember in the case of saul he had been told to go out and destroy the amalekites and then you know the story that's what we're studying at present in our scripture he destroyed all the things that were bad the things that were refused the things that were evil but agag only agag of all the thousands of people the only one agag that he spared and then the good sheep and all the other things and then the lord said it has made me so sorry that i made saul to be king he had not obeyed my voice he had disobeyed my commandment it appeared a little deviation a little disobedience therefore you want to make sure that the whole pattern the whole pattern is what you are concerned with you are carefully observing the little part of the pattern as you observe the big and the major parts let's go to point two divine evaluation of christian service divine evaluation of christian service because of our time we'll not be able to read many references but look at revelation chapter 3 and verse 2 revelation chapter 3 verse 2 be watchful and strengthen the things that remain 
that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Here Christ, the head of the church, was talking to this leader in the church and was saying that he had not found his work perfect before the Lord. He wanted his work to be perfect, his activities to be perfect, everything he did to be perfect. Do you know that God still demands perfection? In the early days of this uh, deeper life, uh, we used to quote almost every week, Be ye therefore perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. And God still demands that in our Christian ministry. The best, only the best is good enough for the Lord. The best of your time. The best of your talent. The best of your ability. The best of your resources. The best of your possession. Only the best is good enough for the Lord. And the best of your intelligence. The best of your zeal. The highest of your commitment. Only that is good enough for the Lord. And so Christ said to this leader of this church, I have not found your work perfect before the Lord. You see, the Lord does not leave us to keep doing the work the way we please. He is not detached from his work. That's why he said to the seven churches in Asia Minor. And he said, I know your works. I know your works. I know your works. And he wanted their work to be perfect before him. He evaluated the services of those people. And the Lord is still evaluating our services today. When the Lord evaluates our service today, what's he looking for? Number one, he's wanting to see it whether it is according to the big plan for the kingdom. According to the big plan for the kingdom. Uh, you see God as a big plan for the kingdom of God. And your little church, your local church is just a part of the whole. And God wants to make sure that what you are doing is in line with the plan for the big picture. You see, there are times where you just say, I'm just a little fellow here. We're just a little district here. We're just a little, a little language church over here. It's a little church, yes. It is a part of the whole. And the Lord is wanting to see. He's evaluating your Christian service to see whether in your small corner, in the little language church, in a little district church, whether you are doing that little thing in your corner there according to his big plan for his kingdom. Number two, when God evaluates our Christian service, he's looking at it whether it is glorifying to God and honoring to Christ. He wants to see whether in your Christian service, all that matters to you is the glory of God. All that matters to you is the honor of God. All that matters to you is this is the way God wants it done. This is the way God wants this to go. This is the place God wants us to live. Now, we have to be very, very vigilant on that. You know, sometimes it's, uh, God even wants you to be without a building. Sometimes. Sometimes God wants you to have a building. Sometimes God wants you to have just a kind of ramshackle building. He doesn't want his glory to be swallowed up in a magnificent kind of tabernacle or cathedral. Uh, very recently, about two weeks ago, uh, one of our language um, coordinators uh, told me that they had got land. And then I said, how did you get it? He said, somebody gave it to us. And I said, I want to see that individual. And eventually, about two weeks ago, that individual came, a woman. And this woman dressed like any of us, any of our Christian women will dress. But the first thing for me to check up as a person that wants to keep to the pattern is, are you born again? Uh, you know, the letter she had written that she was offering this land uh, to the church, free of charge. She's not going to take a penny for it. And she's giving, you know, this number of plots to the, to the church. And then I said, are you born again? She said, yes. I said, oh, do you know you are born again? And she gave me all the details. Then I said, that doesn't seem to agree with what I understand in the Bible. I said, according to the Bible, to be born again means this, 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 this. And then uh, she said, oh, if it is like that, then I don't fully understand. I said, which church do you attend? And then she mentioned the church, but not deep alive. And uh, so I said, well, here we have a principle. And the principle is, we don't take anything from you until you are born again. And we cannot be sorry for that. We need land, but we're not going to take it from just anybody. 
You know, Abraham, the father of faith, he told the king of Sodom, he said, I've raised my hand to the Lord that I will not take from a shoe lashed of what belonged to the uh, king of Sodom, lest you, king of Sodom, shall say, I made Abraham rich. And so I said, Madam, we're very sorry. This person that came with you, let her go and explain salvation to you, being born again to you. We cannot touch your land. We cannot take your land. And I've not seen that um, language coordinator to, you know, to ask him, how far is everything now? But, you know, I rejected that land. Uh, you know, that's Bible. That's Bible. If you're too much eager for land, eager for money, you're going to get into trouble. You know, another district, uh, the coordinator is an uh, English uh, a church coordinator. They've been looking for generator for a long time. And then they discovered a check in the offering box and he knew that it would be for the generator and he came to tell me he said praise the lord we got uh, you know this amount of money a, a large amount of money and i said uh, uh, you know the person that signed that check he said yes i said is he born again why about his life he said in fact that's why he came to see me as being concerned because that person is not born again i said you have to return that check we can't spend that money if we don't have generator, we don't have generator. We have Christ, we don't have generator. We have Holy Ghost, we don't have generator. And we have, we have the Bible, but we don't have generator. And I'm telling you that this word of God, the eternal word of God, is greater than generator. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Not generator in the church, the hope of glory. It is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And I still saw that coordinator yesterday. I said, how about that uh, thing now? And, you know, I told him how to, how to prayerfully and methodically and in intelligently and and in a courteous manner talk to that man and tell him we're sorry this is the way the church is we cannot take that money and you know if we don't know the pattern the, the tendency is that you'll just say we need this we need this we need this and we're going to fall off away from the pattern let's come back to the pattern let's come back to the word of god you know deeper life when we started no land no building no generator no loudspeaker system no organ no musical instrument but we had the doctrine and a deeper life of that time with no generator with no church building with no property at all we're still praying that god will take us back to bethel am i right the deeper life that had no generator is better than the deeper life that has generator. The deeper life that has no church building is better than the deeper life that has building. But then the gold is gone. The real purity is gone. And the real life of the church is gone. We want to all go back to Bethel. And as we want to go back to Bethel, I ask you tonight, all the uh, golden idols in your hand, Rachel, all the golden idols in your hand, Leah, all the golden hands in, in your hand, Bilza, all of you, bring everything let us bury it tonight under the oak tree and then we're going to march and go back to bethel can you rise up and let's go back to bethel we're going back to bethel we want the lord in our lives we want the power of the lord in our midst we want drop all those idols drop all those idols and let's go back to bethel
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you, Father, for the program this day. We worship you because, Lord, you have spoken to us as a father to his children. Lord, we thank you for all that, Father, you have instructed us. Almighty God, we are praying that these things you have revealed to us, we are praying that, Father, you write them upon our hearts in Jesus' name. Gracious Father, we submit ourselves before you. Lord, of the truth, we have gone astray. But how we pray you bring us back. Father, we are asking that, Lord, you touch our lives, transform our lives, change our lives in Jesus' name. Almighty God, we have gone astray. We are doing things that you didn't expect us to do. We are not even building according to pattern. And many of us will build haphazardly. Almighty God, we are praying that you bring us back to the fold. Bring us back to the position where you can instruct us and we can have our eyes focused again on the pattern. And as we build, oh Lord, we are praying that we build according to the specification in Jesus' name. Father, many of us they appear to be running and there is no definite goal. There is no definite um, achievement. Lord, we pray. As we begin to examine the pattern, as we begin to examine the things you have called us to do, we pray that there will be results in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, you are calling us this day to come back to better. How we pray that you purge us of all the idols in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Many of us now are combat with many things. The cares of this life. Many, many things that, Father, we didn't even know before that have come into our lives. Oh, Lord, we pray you purge us in Jesus' name. How we pray, O oh God, that you wash us whiter than snow and make us men and women we ought to be in Jesus' name. Lord, there's a lot of chaff in our lives. A lot of things that are not supposed to be there, they are there in our lives. And no, more, no wonder we are, we are weighed down by these things. But Father, we pray that you deliver us from these idols in Jesus' name. We know for certainty you are going to examine every man's work. And Father, unfortunately, we are told that there are some men's work that will be burnt up by fire. Father, we pray that you not, will not build to the wind in Jesus' name. How we want to be reassured at the last day that we are built according to specification. Because we know that only those that are, are built are according to pattern that will be rewarded. And so, Father, we pray that as we build, help us to build according to directions in Jesus' name. Almighty God, all those things that have crowded our hearts, we command that they will be removed in Jesus' name. All those things that are making, not making us to be effective, we command, be thou removed in Jesus' name. All those things, Father, that have made us ineffective, Almighty God, we take authority this day. We say, be thou removed in Jesus' name. Father, we pray, your precious spirit will breathe upon us. Your precious spirit will come upon us in Jesus' name. Lord, we lack the anointing. We lack the Holy Ghost. We lack the power of God. We pray, oh God, that your power will come upon us in Jesus' name. Father, we ask the radiant light of the Christian life, the radiant glory of the Christian life, the radiant shaking of glory of God, let it come upon our lives in Jesus' name. Father, we want to go back with the anointing. We want to go back with the power of God. We want to go back with the Spirit of God upon our lives. Oh Lord, we pray that our district churches will come back to life in Jesus' name. Lord, we are so full of activity, we are not effective. But Lord, we pray as activity is coupled with effectiveness, we pray that there will be results in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for hearing us. It has been a refreshing time. It has been a wonderful time. Oh Lord, we pray that Lord, this that you have spoken to us, it will remain permanent in our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you for hearing us. Breathe upon us, O oh God, and make us lively oracles in your vineyard in Jesus' name. Thank you for hearing us. 
In Jesus' precious name we pray.